Jeez, I... Good. Hopefully we're good. Let me know if we we're uh, on air now. All right, cool. So we got uh, Speed Infusion working on a couple of things admin-wise. Guys, what's good? What's good, everybody? Uh, I don't think we're streaming today on Facebook. We're going to test that today, find out what's going on with that. But for sure, guys, we should be on Twitch today and YouTube. Um, today I'm working with a pair of Jordan 3s. Um, just to catch you guys up, um, this is a pair for my buddy Roland. Uh, we are working on making some tabs here on the back end of the shoe. Uh, I've already customized this. Where's the other shoe at? Here's the other shoe. So this is where we started, and this is where we're at. Let's see. Is that good for the view? Hopefully you guys could hear me okay. Let me make sure that the uh, mouse is up. And, uh, oh, let me move this out of the way. I'm gonna be working with this today. Alpha Flex. All right, I think we're good. Guys, let me know if the sound is okay. Let me make sure the, the view and everything is good for you guys. But, um, so this is where I'm at. Uh, we are working on making tabs. So I gotta pull some paint out. So I'm gonna grab some paint. Oh, this might not be good. I might have to make paint today. Oh, you know what? I got some flaming orange. All right, so I got some flaming orange, which is uh, one color I'll need. I'm looking to make a tab like this. And so the other paint will be a sunset yellow. Cool. So I got the paints. Let's move one of these guys to the side so we can get started. All right, guys, let's jump into it. Uh, before I start, I uh, just want to say welcome back, everybody. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, I've got materials all over the place. I apologize because I've been working all, all week uh, on some other things. So um, today I'm going to be working on showing you guys how to make custom tabs like this guy here. This is just, it's not even glued in yet. Um, but just to show you guys what I've done so far, all I've done is snap the... This back heel here, I just got through and snapped the threads so you guys could see that, see that? And it's deep enough where I just kind of extended the tab here. So when I put the tab in, we can glue it down, first glue it down, stabilize it, and then we can sew it back together. So that's what we're doing today, all right? Now, um, I was going to use this tab, but man, I just, I feel like I kind of messed up on it a little bit. It caught a little bit here. So I'm just going to start from scratch. So let me grab some material. A lot of people ask me like, where do you grab your materials or what kind do you need? And you know, to be honest with you guys, oh, there goes that acetone. To be honest with you guys, I go to, go to a number of different spots to get different materials. So... Um, today I'm just working with some, you know, vinyl. I believe I got this from an auto upholstery spot, and they were selling this by the yard, and it was really cheap. It was like maybe like ten bucks per yard, maybe a little less. I don't remember exactly, but um, you know, thickness-wise, it's nice. It's comparable, I think, to this one that I was working with. This one's a little bit thicker. This was actual leather as well. So, um, you know, I'm I'm deciding to go with the white instead this time. I use black. And for some reason, it just it's really difficult to coat black and turn it from black to a neon orange. So instead of going the route of painting this guy white again and then coating it with the you know colors of orange that I choose, I'm just going to cut it out from scratch and we're going to just start it from the beginning, okay? So uh, let me... Uh, oh, cool. Speed Infusion, thank you for cheering, homie. Appreciate you. So let me uh, get some material out. This is, again, just auto upholstery vinyl. It's not that expensive. I'm sure if you even check on like Amazon or whatever, you'll find uh, this kind of fabric. You know, so uh, ounce-wise, you know, maybe two ounces or three ounces is what we're we're looking at here. All right. Um, let me know if the 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 audio and visual is good, guys. Before I really 
jump into it. I know sometimes uh, we'd have a sound issue or whatever. It looks a little not bright, that's for sure. What do you guys think? Is it? Is it? Um, give me a quick sec. Let me see if I could just change the brightness. Brightness says 109. Now that looks over. Apply. All right, let me know how that looks, guys. Is that better? Did that not make a difference? I can't even tell. Okay. Uh, let me say what's good to people before I jump into it as well. Let's see who's here. Who's in the building? What's good, everybody? We got customs by Kev. What's good? Shevin, what's going on from Knoxville? Needs to be brighter. Yeah. Can you can you help me out with the brightness, uh, speed infusion, if you don't mind? Cool. Shevin said we're sounding good. Thank God, man. The audio is always like an issue for me for whatever reason. And um, speed infusion is going to work with the, the brightness. I don't know why it looks the way it does. So give us a quick sec. As he's doing that, let me just cut a little uh, panel out. Where's my other shears? I got these. Nice sharp shears, man. They just like butter cut through. So whenever I'm cutting something out and I kind of have an idea of. Let me make sure this is in camera too and focus. I know the, the panel is only going to be this big. So I'll cut just slightly bigger than it. Oh, it saves material. That might be a little over, but it's all good. All right, so. First thing, let's just get enough material and move this big stuff out the way. Try to keep stuff organized today. All right, and then we gotta prep this guy up, okay? Let's move the shears. Let's grab just, um, doesn't need to be a cotton ball, it could just be like a Q-tip. And we'll grab some acetone, and the acetone was here somewhere, it fell, there we go. Just glazing it over. That way we could prep it. Get any grease off of it. Really just focusing in that center. So we're gonna cut the edges off. There, that should be good, cool. Put that guy to the side. Yeah, we could easily knock out two there, cool. And so let's clean this brush out real quick. Guarantee you it's a mess. go I just had a little bit of acetone sitting in there to speed up the process all right I want to make sure that before we start because I'm doing neons you don't want the airbrush to get stuck so I just do a cleanse right before it let me pop this guy open too Pull that needle back. Check the needle, see if there's any dirt. Good there. And let's just check the inside of here. Oh yeah, you a hot mess in there. Okay, so let's clean this out real quick. I'm gonna just gonna do a quick soak. All right, while that's baking, just make sure that everything else looks good. That looks good, and let's pull this up. Cool. Let's see, needs to be brighter. Okay, cool. Did I say what's up to Webs? Webs, what's going on, buddy? How are you, man? Where did my mouse go? Speed Infusion was working on the brightness. Now it looks way better. Thank you so much, dude. I appreciate that. All right, make sure that everyone else... Carl's Customs, what's good? Shevin, welcome back, homie. All right, so let me just, uh, I'm just cleaning the brush out because, man, when I, when I paint neons, I'll tell you guys, if it gets stuck, the, the airbrush, it just doesn't lay right on the panel, and I just don't want it to get all, like, uneven or, you know, get dark spots on it. A lot of times, if you don't clean the brush out and you were painting, like, black paint before it, those little speckles might hit, and, and it just kind of doesn't have the same effect, you know, when it's all done.
Sorry guys, I know I should have done this beforehand, but it's gonna take me another 15, 20 minutes to do that, so I might as well do it and hopefully if you haven't cleaned the airbrush out, you'll learn real quick. These guys right here are super clutch. Interdental brushes, that's what they're called. You can find them at like a Target. I think they're at the 99 cent store too, but they're not as, I think the packs are smaller. They come in like a four pack or something. Yeah, okay, that feels good. Now I'm just gonna use a Q-tip and just clean out the inside real quick. All right, last thing, let me just run the back through. Sometimes there'll be paint in this back end here. So let's just push the paint out and see if there's any paint. I, I usually like twist the needle at the same time. For some reason, I feel like you can get the most gunk out. <laughs> let's see. So right in the front here. Yeah, so you can see a little bit of gunk. Let's clean that guy off. Cool. Let's run it through one more time. Let's see, make sure. Hmm. There we go. All right. Guys, I'll check the chat in a sec, sorry. Just want to knock this out real quick. Cool. Feel good. Feel straight. Let's take this piece out. All right. Oh man, a lot of people talking. My bad, y'all. <laughs> hey guys, got an idea. I'm going to try to use die on the leather portion before I start to paint just in case the paint falls fails me and cracks you want to be able to tell I'll let you know how it goes dude webs that's from what I understand that's the 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 most proper way to paint shoes is to dye it first so exactly what uh Quan just said webs custom kicks that's the proper way to paint shoes but yeah man let me know how that goes the one, the one situation that I find a little challenging on that is if you're going to paint like a neon color, for example, like right now, um, a lot of the dyes uh, tend to be more darker. I think you can get like a, ye like a yellow dye like, or, a, or a tan for this kind of a, a job that I'm doing right now too. But yeah, that's, that's the proper way to, to actually paint shoes. So if, if the paint does fail... All right, cool. So I'm looking through the the nozzle to make sure that I could see like an actual hole going through. That way, let's see if I could show you guys here real quick. I don't know if there's not enough light or, or not, but you should be able to like squint your eye and see inside of there. And you should be able to see like a white paper. That's when I know that that's a good check for me to say, okay, this is cleaned enough to drop this in. So for a lot of beginners, uh, when they're airbrush gets stuck that's the first step they should take is take this out and see if they can clean that and be able to see a hole and that way you know that the paint can flow through that just putting enough pressure on here to lock that into because uh, that's another step sometimes people don't lock it tight enough some people over tighten it and can break it so just be careful I like to do it by hand you know it's it's good enough where it locks the air in and uh, the paint will flow nice and smooth. So where did my um, needle go? I think this was it. I hope this is it. That's the problem with having like so many airbrushes. You'll just have random needles around. All right, let's see. Sick, okay, cool, we're good to go. Let's do a quick check and then I'll check the chat. All right. 
So this is like not, um, I wouldn't do this all the time, but just to show you guys, I could see the acetone coming through. That means that we're clear to start shooting paint. Just gonna clear everything out there. Should be clear, cool. All right, guys, let me check the chat real quick, man. I know I said that a million times, but uh, I just wanna make sure we're good to go before we start. Um, yeah, sorry, Webs, I did see it, man. I'm sorry, bro. I, I did notice that, Webs. Uh, Keon Thompson said, uh, Don Limon Customs in the building. What's good, man? How you living, Keon? Customs by Kev. Hey, I want to age a soul. Anyone have any suggestions as far as pens or anything to give that vintage look? Um, anybody have suggestions for that? For Customs by Kev, let us know. Uh, Customs by Kev's on YouTube, guys. Welcome back. Uh, Customs by Kev. Jason Arcega says, how's it going, boss? How you living, man? Everything good with you? Webs Custom Kicks, it may count for less paint layers as well. Yeah, no, it's true. Oh, you're going to use a dye pen on it. That's that's an interesting way to do it. I was thinking, like, the one the one thing I hate about dye is it's so liquidy. So, like, when you place it down, you got to be very gentle with, if you're going to brush it on, to just barely put on any dye in the beginning and test it out. Otherwise, what will happen is it'll start running. And you don't want it to run. You want to try to keep a nice, even layer when you dye. So... The different ways to do it, you know, and so that's a, a an interesting take on uh, how you're looking at it, a dye pen. So let me know if that comes out even, Quan, how, how that looks, because the other way would be to airbrush it as well, just like what, what we're going to do today with uh, paint. Let's see what else we got. Anybody else in the building? Oh, the dye lab What's good, man. <laughs> uh, now you're good, man. We haven't even started yet, dude. You're, you're good to go. The lunatic, what's good, homie? So we got, man, we got a lot of people on Twitch today. Interesting. What's the count on Twitch? Oh, okay. We're, we're, we're pretty close even right now. All right. There goes the neighborhood. What's good, Wade? All right, man. So let's uh, let's jump into this, man. I know I, I always lag uh, starting off, man, but I think I got most of the chat good to go. Um, I die before I paint almost every time. Wow. The dye lab, you're very disciplined, homie. Just understand that dye mixed with a leather color example, if you dye white, with red it'll turn pink yep exactly that's that's from experience right there legacy colorway what's good homie patreon fam in the building we got a lot of patreon folks today man can i get a hashtag patreon please if you're a patreon fam candle dye got your six said candle dye that's a good um i think i mentioned candle dye before as well i haven't i haven't actually tested it, the the method though I have it. I just haven't tried it yet. That goes for suede too. Exactly. The dye pens by Angelus are amazing. I, I haven't tried them. I think I tried them once. They gave me some and I just couldn't get them uh, the paint to, to go through. But then also I was like very um, new with the, the whole markers and, and paints and stuff too. Let's go. The Dye Lab. Patreon fan for life. Moises, what's good, homie? Webs got some kicks. What's good? Patreon fam. Yo, by the way, guys, we hit 50 followers today, man. Um, Man, I, I forgot who the, the person's name is because it, it was early in the morning. But shout out uh, number 50, yo. So uh, I got to give some stuff away. We got to do a giveaway for, for Patreon people. I told you all at 40 followers and then at 50, we're going to do a giveaway. So I got to think of something dope. I haven't even thought. I've been, I've been mulling around ideas to say like yo 50 is a big number and i'm like super happy so uh shout out to the patreon folks man that makes me so happy to see that we've been growing you know uh speaking of uh let me just mention to you guys this bag in the back so we're working on editing this guy right here it's so big that i can't even put it you know thank god we have this camera now where we could we could show a different angle but th this is like a digibit bag so everything here has been painted with uh hand paint everything there has been done with hand paint and then a combination of airbrushing as well so th this is uh something that alex and i are we're working on right now on uh for the patreon channel uh, i added this off-white um buckle just to use it as kind of like a duffel bag it's actually a belt you know so this is kind of something different swooshes man this guy kicks solio oh Man, I got to show you guys some of these swooshes, y'all. 
Look at the swooshes, man. This is this is at Kixolio. Man, he does incredible work. So that this is a guy that I kind of drew up. I call him Drippy. <laughs> Say what's up to Drippy, y'all. So yeah, that's Drippy. And then he just he had some different, just really cool um, swooshes, man. So I was so happy to collaborate with him. The bag was made by my buddy Joe at Joe the Creator. 28 I believe don't quote me on that but I know it's for sure it's at Joe the creator and uh, he's the one who made the bag his his company is at Fabrice MFG that's F-A-B-R-I-S-H MFG man their, their work for their bags their quality is whew. man this is like um, luxury just luxury line material that he uses their leather is very very good so just shout out to both of those guys for helping out on the bag. The other thing we're gonna uh, work on on Patreon is gonna be some kicks. Uh, I reworked these kicks, man, and these kicks, dude. Oh boy, were they a mess, man. See speed infusion here. I feel like the brightness is too bright because the white is really blown up. But I had to rework these, so I'm gonna show you guys how to not only rework. Um, I mean, it won't it won't always work out where you can rework some of these shoes. You might have to scrap the shoes, but these were uh, salvageable. So I'll show you all how to, you know, save some kicks after they've been uh, not done correctly. But more importantly, I'll show you guys how to do the, the fabric stitching, the toe box, and how you can do the sides if you're interested in doing like Air Force Ones. Just any, any real kind of recon job where you're doing minor detailing. Um, that'll be a great tutorial that's coming up as well. So uh, just just an update for you guys. If you're interested, it's on patreon.com slash feelgoodthreads. Again, I appreciate anybody's support that comes through. Man, I appreciate you guys' support here even, man. So thank you guys so much, man. Um, all right, man. I'm talking too much. Let's mix some paint, y'all. Um, what I'm using right now is a combination of neon sunset yellow. And I believe this was neon flaming orange. So it's it's kind of like a in between of the the two. This is what I'm gonna try to get at, and that's gonna produce something right in the middle. Okay, it'll be a neon. It'll be it'll be a neon that's in between the two. So I kind of like that that color. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to mix not exactly half and half. I'm gonna put this one in first and try to put in less. And keep in mind, like we're just doing these real small tags. So don't waste a lot of paint on this. Just start off with a little bit, and then if you need to pour more, you can pour more. You know, save uh, material. Oh, snap, I see another, um, great, I see another needle right next to me. I wonder if I put the wrong needle in. If I did, I did, let's, we'll figure it out either way. Knowing me, I probably did. 60% of the time, I did it all the time. All right, so let's see what this color comes out to. Okay, cool. See, I feel like that's too blown out. <laughs> I don't know if you guys could see that color, man. Let me know if you guys could see that. If uh, you guys cannot, then I'll, I'll, we'll turn the brightness down a little bit. Man, I don't know what the deal is with um, the lighting. I feel like we got great lighting in here, but the settings always change over here. All right, y'all, let's see what else we got here. Uh, how you prep pa uh, oh, patent, patent leather for paint. Uh, Antoine, I did a, a tutorial on that, man. Uh, doing patent leather is kind of different from doing rather, uh, regular leather. You got to actually like sand down that that patent leather man because um it doesn't it has this clear coat on top of it and you can't get to the actual leather you're just gonna have to sand the the clear coat down a little bit i it, i mean it's a process dude you should check out my youtube channel uh i've done a pair of uh chris paul uh pe emerald three uh emerald 11s um on angelus's channel i've done a pair of red ones as well they were the Carmelo Anthony's uh, from back in the day before they actually tried to release the red pairs. Um, but yeah, it's it's a process, man. Check the check the channel out. Um, you have to use adhesion promoter. You have to use 
man, I've used so many things now. Uh, it's like a multi-step process. I've used uh, LK now shoes uh, to glossy to to finish the the last coat up. Uh, but yeah, that's a good question, man. It's I, I wish I could answer that like right away, but it's a process, you know. But it, the instructions are all there. So legacy, thank you, man. I appreciate it. Hundred is the new mark, man, for sure. On the way, dude. Exactly. Oh yeah, Dialab. I've seen actually. I I remember when Chad did that because I watched that video. He made it seem like super simple. I hate Chad. Chad's like the. Uh, um, uh, most talented dude with, and it doesn't seem like he even like practices or does anything. He just like, oh yeah, you need me to paint this twenty by twenty mural. Okay, cool. Just give me a pen, and he'll just freehand. Will make all kinds of crazy art. So shout out Chad, man. He's a good guy. Sneaky Ricky, what's up? Check out Suhil's video on how to repaint pan leather. Oh, thank you, Keon. Appreciate that, man. Yeah, I mean, I, I've tried my best to, to keep that updated, but, man, I, I'll be honest with you guys, man. Jordan 11s are not fun to paint, man. It's just such a process to get from, like, um, painting it from base all the way to a finished product. And then if you're adding detailing, oh, man, it's a whole different ball game. Like, say, for example, you want to do, like, a bandana print on top of that. Then you have to stencil that out on top of it. So, unless you want to freehand it. Uh, but it's not it's not an easy process to work with 11s. It's one of the most difficult, I'd say. Sheldon James said, yo! Just working on some mock-ups. Yeah. Hey, man, mock-ups are always good, man. I like that. Sneaky Ricky. Ever since I got this iPad, I started doing mock-ups. And it's it's like kind of, uh, it's almost like painting. It's it's very soothing to do it, too. You know, once you, once you get um, past the frustration steps of like, how do I cut this and how do I repaint this? Once you understand how to use Procreate, it becomes very seamless, which is a lot of fun. So that's cool. What are you, are, what are you doing uh, the mock-ups on? I'm interested. Oh, man, you got a cordless airbrush? How is that? Is it smooth? The Dye Lab, let me know how, how that is. I've heard of them and I, I've seen people use them. They're like almost like an air compressor is underneath it. Almost like a, you know, like a spray can or whatever. So I, I'd like to hear uh, your feedback on that, man. Sneaky said, nice. Capo, always at it, bro. We always grind out here. All right, man, let's let's, let's jump into this real quick, man. I'm going to move this guy to the side. And I'm, I'm going to pray that this airbrush goes on the first take. But, you know, before you have a project you mess up, let's uh, test this out. Yeah. That looks like it's coming out pretty nice. Cool. So let's uh, let's jump into uh, getting the base started, yo. Let me get something to protect this. Uh, can we do it in there? Let's try it in there. And then I'll go get a coffee and they see me with one orange thumbnail. Awkward. What has this guy been doing? Oh, he was too lazy to look for somewhere to place the tab, so he just shot it by hand. Cool. It's coming out pretty smooth already. Alright, let's flip it. Oh yeah, good job. Alright. I'm the creepy guy with the orange thumb. What does this guy do? He always walks in with a different colored thumb. <laughs> Sorry. That's funny. Alright, that's a good first layer. Lay that out. <laughs> I don't even know if you guys can see that. Can you guys see that? <laughs> yeah, you got your six. You already know, man. When I go get that Vietnamese coffee at like 10 p.m., everyone's like knocking out, and I'm like, all right, cool. 3, 3, 3 a.m. will be the time I go to bed. All right. Can you guys see this, man? I feel like this is so washed out in the camera, dude. I can't tell if you guys can see if that's orange or not, but there's a good, like, layer of orange at this point. You can't see it, right? Speed is not even here, bro. Let me, let me see if I could change this again. Sorry, y'all. Configure video. 
brightness is too high, right? I don't know, do I change brightness? Do I change contrast? Not contrast. Oh. Hmm. Yeah, it's bouncing off the walls, right? Hmm. Man, this sucks, man. I want to show you guys what this looks like, but I don't want to make the... Anybody know what setting it is? White balance, maybe? I think it might be white balance. Let's see. Ah, oh, it's not letting me change it, yo. Oh, it says auto. Oh, yeah, that was weird. <laughs> Dang, man. Speed Infusion, are you there? I'm sorry, y'all. I'm going to just keep going with it, man. Hopefully, Speed Infusion hears us and he can help me fix this thing. Because I'm looking at it and I could already tell that y'all can't see. Uh, probably looks like white, right? Yeah, you can see my orange finger though, huh? Awesome. <laughs> Y'all could use my finger for reference or what? <laughs> Keon made a great point, man. Y'all got to use my finger for reference until we get this thing fixed. <laughs> oh, man. So hopefully this fool pops back on. I know he got like 17 kids. <laughs> I can't even be mad. He's gonna he's gonna pop back on and be like, "Yo, why you got an orange thumb, dog?" I mean, don't worry about that. Fix the damn whiteness, dog. All right, let's try. Let's try. I'm gonna get try to get this orange enough where you guys can see it. Like Fifty Cent. Get Richard Die trying. I'm gonna try to bend it, manipulate it. Compared to my thumb. The oranger the better. Yeah, for sure, man. I wanted to kind of pop, to be honest with you. Because it's a little tab, so kind of reminds me of like a union tab or you know, something small you almost wanted to to accent the shoe. And uh the what we're putting on on the actual tag is his son's numbers. They they all play basketball, so well you can see here I was testing this out and it failed. You know what I mean? So it's important for me to test things out and if it fails then I got to move on to something else that I know that that'll work you know but yeah this you know these are his kids numbers so I want to make sure they kind of pop and so what Keon said man you know the oranger the better I'm, I'm sure the kids they're gonna be you know happy to see their dad with their, their numbers on his shoes right you know what I like about teaching here like live is i can show you guys exactly how how long i wait you know before i do each layer you guys can see it's streamed exactly so it's not like a question when i started there was nobody who was doing this there was no live i sound old huh it was like six years ago i should really be doing this on a platform by the way but i'm doing this and i'm sure it's getting all over the cutting mat and you don't even notice it. So just, I should probably tell y'all, don't be lazy. Where's my, man, I have a little, where's Jeff's thing? Everything's always a mess up in here. How many of you guys are messy with your, your work? Like, you, you know where stuff is, but it's still a mess. Oh, well. Oh, there it is. Crazy. Every time I just about give up looking, I find the thing I need. Crazy. All right. This thing. Man, Jeff's thing is so clutch. Speaking of Jeff, man, he's sending over some... I know I've said this a million times to you guys. He said he's sending over some uh, stuff for giveaway. So I'm, I'm excited to give you guys that stuff. Especially because I really like all of Jeff's products, man. These LK shoe stuff. Uh, all the scratch-resistant sealers are... Man, they're, they're number one, man, when it comes to... Um, just glossy, the matte, the factory. The, he's got it pretty much locked. And then on top of that, I know it works because... When I forget it in my airbrush, dude, it is so hard to clean out of the airbrush, which is a good sign because that means it really sticks, you know? So let me put this on a little... We're going to tape this guy up. 
I taped this guy up so he doesn't move around everywhere. Cool. Probably give it another layer or two and then hopefully you guys could see it. But look, you guys can even see that I'm pressing on it with no problem. That's how light the layer is, you know, that it's already dried. There we go. Now, if I had to do this again, I would have covered Jeff's thing from the get-go. Like, it looked really nice. <laughs> and I don't know what day it was or what night it was I was working. And it must have been a rush because... Oh! This is uh, probably Rob uh, McElhinney's kicks because I can see the Jordan 4 tabs here. But I was working, you know, fast and I should have just covered this up. It's, it looks a mess now but it looks so nice before but this thing works great when you're let's take this guy off here when you're working on some kicks you can use this thing and it kind of leans towards you i don't want to mess up the sole and stuff but i'm just saying you place it down like that so these these guys are really cool i'm hoping he sends me one of these as well um i forgot what he calls these things anybody know i don't know <laughs> Anyways, let me uh, show you guys where we're at. No, still no speed infusion, man. I got a Texas full. I'm like, yo, get back on. Stop slacking. Need brightness lowered. All right. Well, hopefully he jumps back on in a minute, guys. Keon, uh, your videos and Vic Almighty help me. That Man, I'm really happy to hear that, homie. Oh, we started cleaning shoes three years ago. Are you a, res a restoration artist? Man, I miss a lot. Oh, man, there's a lot of... Uh, man, I just miss a lot of the comments. I just looked up. I'm like, oh, damn. How much did I miss, y'all? Sorry, guys. Okay. Um, flight school. What's good? I didn't even see you're here. There we go. Man, I knew you guys are smarter than me. I knew it. All you guys are like, we knew it too. <laughs> That's messed up, man. Y'all trying to say I'm dumb? That's it. That was a good point. Yeah, you probably said that like 40 minutes ago. My bad, man. We can see you. Okay. And then Keon did say we can see your orange fingers. <laughs> All right, let's see what else we got. <laughs> exactly, man. Got, uh, got your sex at F and Speed Infusion. Let's go. <laughs> That's funny, man. Okay, use your hand to cover the light. Okay, so we're good there. How'd you do that with the numbers? Um, how do you do that with the numbers? Sorry, Keon, I just, I, I, I read what you said, but I'm not sure which numbers you're talking about. So if you could just repeat, I appreciate that. Oh yeah, got your six. I know your work area is trash. You're working on all those little dotting the the little Swarovski crystals, which takes forever. And then you also have to use that that glue, which gets all over the place. You know. All right, man. I think we're good here. So I'm gonna just go ahead and dump out the rest of the orange. Hopefully, I don't need it. Should I dump it out? Maybe maybe I'll you know, maybe I'll keep it. Actually, I got a better idea. I'll keep it just in case. And we're going to use this inner coat today. Somebody asked me the other day, I think it was on YouTube. They said, can you show us a tutorial on using inner coat? Man, it's so bright that. Okay. Anyways, just trust me, y'all. It's called LK Shoes Inner Coat. What this is supposed to do is it's supposed to kind of like layer this one layer off now. This base coat is going to be now just one layer. And then we can put a stencil on top of that. And then we can use a stencil and use another color. So that's going to be my goal today. Okay? The numbers on the tab. Hmm. The, the, the custom uh, tabs. I, uh, if you're asking about the actual tabs that I got for the Jordan 4s, one of my buddies has like this laser printing place. 
uh, and he does 3D printing, all kinds of different prints, and he he did the custom tabs for me. Um, but the thing is, I asked him like, "Yo, um, why don't you do this for a lot of people? This is a like you can have a lot of people, um, you know, help you and support you to do this." And he said he doesn't want to do it. So it's on him, you know. It's that's not his his forte, and so he chose not to. I said, "Okay, cool," you know. Oh, awesome, dude! This has all brown paint in it. Fabulous. All right, I'm just gonna dump this then. I'm gonna just dump this because it's gonna take a while to clean that one out again. So, and I'm not surprised that I <laughs> that I didn't clean that out at all. I like to thin this out a little bit. A little bit of acetone won't hurt it. And then sometimes, if it's not going down, I'll just do a quick brush off. This will just break it up a little bit faster. I think we're good. Yeah, we're straight. Cool. <laughs> oh man, the dye lab! I can imagine, man. You, because you said that you, you're, you're the one who dyes everything beforehand, right? Because man, you, if you drop dye, <laughs> if you drop dye like once, dude, it's a wrap. It is horrendous to clean up dye and good luck trying to clean up the dye completely because whatever it hits it, it generally will leave stains that's why I, I give people who can uh sway dye mad respect man because it's very difficult to get a nice even sway dye i mean at least for me it is people like i've seen people who who've done that on multiple pairs and I'm just like, man, how do they do that so clean? Whether they airbrush it, I don't know. But some people I've seen hand paint it. And it looks super even. All right, it's so just uh, cleaning out the... It's just a quick flush. You know, it doesn't need to be perfect because now we're going to be dropping the inner coat on, on top of this anyways. All right, so this uh, stencils. Okay, cool. For use with stencils, not for use as a final finish. Cool. Uh, LK Leather Top Coat is a super durable top coat designed to be used over art on leather and canvas surfaces. Okay. Um, LK Coat is meant to be a final coating for custom art on leather or canvas items. Cool. So we're straight here. Um, what else? The sealer is best. Set air at 25 to 35 PSI. Two medium wet coats thoroughly before continuing to the next coat. After the final coat is applied and dried, the item needs to cool for at least 10 minutes before handling to apply with a brush. Okay, cool. All right, I got the gist of it. So let me drop some of this in. I don't think I'm going to need that much. So I'm going to just drop a couple of drops. I said a couple, I dropped about seven, okay? So I lied. All right, let's put this guy up here. And now I'm gonna just go ahead and top this off. All right, so that should be one coat there. Let's go ahead and let that dry. Is that dry? I'm gonna check the... Finally, I can catch up with you guys, man. Let me check the chat right quick. Got your sixes out of here again. Yo. Peace, Wade. I'll see you soon, man. Can't wait to see your finished product. Oh, Keon, you use the dabber, man? That's another great way to use. Um, I need to work with that dabber. I've never really tried the dabber. So that's, that's a good um, alternative to brushing. That dabber is supposed to work really well in sock liners as well. I've seen people like, it's pretty crazy. They, they'll, they'll dab it in. And then they'll go around that whole liner with like, and you can just see the 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 dye seeping into the the liner and almost stopping at the perfect spot. So yeah, I've, I'm 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 interested in, in learning that, but I'm also intimidated. <laughs> to be honest with you, I'm intimidated. I, I, as many times as I've worked on suede, I still don't like to work on suede because I feel like once you damage it, it's very difficult to bring it back. You know, and uh, the things that I think about is like trying to turn them into a neon yellow or neon orange 
and it's it's really difficult to change those colors up you know and keep the uh, keep the texture right you know and, th and then if you get it right then if they get dirty like somebody steps on your shoes it's very difficult to clean up really cool colors in the beginning though I get them to pop All right, that's two right there, okay? Now, um, Jeff told me don't ever use a heat gun to speed up this process. So um, just a heads up for anybody who's like, yo, I'm in a rush. I wouldn't use a heat gun. I'd probably just give this another, you know, I know it says 10 minutes, so I got a little bit of time. So let me, uh, as this is kind of drying, what time is it right now? 7.32. So about 7.42 is when we should probably try to apply that stencil. But he said if you need to dry it, use a, a hair dryer, not a heat gun. Okay, I'm pretty sure that that's the same thing with the inner coat right here as well. Um, this set of numbers, in case you guys are wondering, how'd you get this? This was just custom artwork that I made on my Cameo. Uh, I've got a Cameo silhouette, which makes stencils. And that's, oh, this is probably not the best way to start this tutorial here. Let's just peel off the junk that I don't need. There. But yeah, so anyways, I handmade these stencils. <laughs> Long story short, I handmade these. So we're going to learn how to put these on. When we get a chance, um, Speed Infusion, what I want to do is uh, install the software on this computer so then we can teach these guys how to do this from scratch. Okay. But anyways, I've got the, the two boys' numbers here. I'm going to have to separate them. Cool. Speed Infusion just answered. Let me just see what he said real quick. Okay, done. Okay, sick. Oh, yeah. <laughs> sick. Now y'all can see the orange, right? I don't have to do all these sacred handshakes to show you guys the, the, the true color. Still a little bright. I mean, this is neon, neon over here. But um, anyways, let's jump back here. Uh, the O's, let, let go, go ahead and just very carefully peel the O's out. Sometimes I like to keep this side too, you know, because if you keep these and for some reason you mess up, you can place them back down on the areas you need to. And then you can repaint around them. So just food for thought. I'm hoping I don't have to do that. But a lot of times, you know, I'll have to print out a second one of these because I, you know, I fail on the first attempt. And, you know, it's okay to fail. You just got to learn from it. So I'm using a small X-Acto knife here. This is a Fiskars, I believe. Yeah, Fiskars. I love this whole thing. Uh, when you get used to working with it, it makes your life feel a lot easier. You know, getting the right tools you know, for these jobs is imperative for you, man. Number 24. Hmm, I wonder why he chose 24. 24 and 0, 0, okay? He's, uh, Roland's got a third son, and um, he's number 3. So we're going to have to place him somewhere as well. And uh, we, I, I haven't thought about it yet. You know, as we get closer to that point, we'll do that. But today, I want to at least try to knock these guys out, okay? So now we got to think, where are we going to place the OO and the 24? So I said at 7:42, I think we're, uh, I think we're we're good to place these guys down. I might cheat a little bit and place them down a little sooner, but I'll tell you right now, if I do that, sometimes what'll happen is as I peel the stencil off, the orange might come with it, and that sucks because repainting this, like hand painting it, is really tough to get the exact match, but more importantly, it's hard to get the exact like continuity that we have of this layer like it you can tell by like little almost like brush marks 
that you've fixed those areas. So for me, I'd rather wait, you know, a little bit than go all out and just try to put this stencil on. A lot of people mess up in that category. They rush it and they're just like so eager to put on the, the stencils. And so what I like to do is I try to keep them on for a minimal time because the longer you keep them on, the longer that adhesive on the stencil on the back of this guy, it's going to solidify more and more and more into your orange paint. And then what's going to happen is when you peel it up, it peels up with it. So that's why, you know, for today, and, and, and I might not wait long enough. I don't know. I might pull this off <laughs> live and pull up orange. It, you know, it's a fact of, you know, I, I just, I should have waited longer. But, you know, just I'm giving you guys a heads up. So if it happens to me now, that that's going to be more than likely the problem. Okay. Uh, GTC Reels, what's good, Graham? How you living, man? You missed the Patreon shout outs, homie. We're at uh, 50 uh, members, so we got another giveaway, bro. So uh, if you guys are um, interested in joining the Patreon channel, you want to be part of the giveaways, there's different uh, like categories, different tiers. You have to be in that giveaway tier. So I just want to make sure you guys know that before you sign up, okay? Um, the person that signed up, thank you today. Uh, you're the 50th person, man. That, I think, makes a lot of people in that giveaway tier happy. Now I'm just kind of hand cutting this. We don't need these little pieces anyways, right? Cool. I could already feel that inner coat is kind of locked it in. It's crazy. Okay, Webs, should I do another layer? You let me know. Web Webs Custom Kicks. Guys, if you haven't followed Webs Custom Kicks, man, he does some incredible work. And he's he's put a lot of people on game um, since we've been streaming live, man. So shout out Webs, man. Same with you, Graham. Uh, you know, you guys you guys put in a lot of work, man. I really appreciate you guys. Legacy Colorway as well, man. Legacy, man, I was asking him advice uh, on the Dior Air Force Ones that I was working on. Because this guy is a pro. You know, so thank you guys, man. I really appreciate you guys. Uh, Keon said, check out Don Limon Customs on FB. Keon, do you have an Instagram as well, man? Webs came and then he left. <laughs> he went to go uh, grab some food or a snack or something. All right. Well, I guess he said hit it with another coat. When did he say that? At, at uh, nine at 38. Man, I feel like if I hit it with another coat, I'm going to have to wait another 10 minutes. And I really don't want to wait another 10 minutes. Ah, decisions, right? All right. Let's try it. I'm gonna try it out. Like Dave Chappelle said. Tyrannosaurus Rex. I'm gonna try it out. I missed the Chappelle show, man. That was so funny. Alright. 24 going on. And you know what? Let's uh let's load this. Let's load the brush real quick. Alright, this is my first time working with this stuff, guys. I hope this works well. I'm a little nervous, not because I don't think that the paint's gonna work well, it's because I'm putting it on top of this guy and I wanna lay it out perfect. Hannon, what's good, homie? How you living? Hannon, you're you're um, in another country, is that correct? I think you were here before. Oh, you're lagging a lot. All right, guys, so this is Alpha Flex. So if you guys have never heard of this company, if you don't know now, you know. <laughs> Alpha Flex, all right? Flexible textile leather paint. Somebody, oh uh, man, you know what? Who was just asking right now? Now I feel like a, an idiot for not mentioning this. I almost got to go all the way back up, dude. Oh man, I don't know if I'm gonna find you, bro. Sucks. Well, I haven't tried this yet, but you know, today's gonna be my first day trying it. The reason why I'm looking through the chat is somebody earlier had asked uh, to, how do you, oh, here you go, Antoine, uh, P-E-A-Y. I wanna say P-A, maybe? Antoine, this paint, it says here, use on leather, patent leather, 
canvas, paper, fabric, wood, plaster, masonry, paper mache, or most non-slick, non-oily surfaces, bro. This is this is what you might need, homie. So um, you know, I haven't tried it yet, but it specifically says that, and I haven't seen any other paint brand say that, which is dope, you know. Uh, but yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna drop this in right now. The other thing I like, this is a five ounce bottle. So it's pretty big, but I like the the fact that they have these tops like that. Just makes it a lot easier to pour them out. Cool. So I think I gotta take this top off real quick. Right. And just if you guys are interested in this company, I believe the I gotta double check the Instagram just make sure. But I know it's under oh. There's paint coming out. Let me make sure I don't drop this everywhere. It's under Alpha 6 Corporation. All right, let me go ahead and just drop this in the trash. Because knowing me, I'll... Man, I got my All-Star shorts on too. I'm not trying to get them messed up. Okay. So far, so good. Cool. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just looking at the... How much of a paint geek am I when I opened up a bottle of black and said, Cool. But yeah, I'm, I'm excited to use this. Let's try this out. Let's go ahead and uh, move this guy out the way real quick. Okay, so I moved most of the... I'm going to clear this out because I really want to make sure we don't have any hitches right here. When we, when, we, when we place this guy down, the actual numbers down, we want to make sure that those numbers are sprayed really, really lightly, real smooth coats. There's no like... Uh, jamming or anything in, in front of this airbrush so let me just make sure that I give it a nice cleanse right now I'm just trying to get that inner coat which we just laid out I want to get that all off of the the needle so I'll just grab a paper towels work great you know because there's kind of rough so they'll pick up all that excess paint or whatnot All right, let's give that one more. All right, now I'm just shooting it all down to get that all out the way. Cool. Just for additional sake, guys, if you feel like, oh, there feels like something's in there, you can always use this little inner dental brush here. And you can see that it still has residue there of like orange. So you never wanna like shoot this color and then say, for example, you wanna shoot white white's pure bright white is going to get affected it's going to get tainted with this orange so you got to clear the whole brush out i'll recommend cleaning the nozzle and everything we don't have to do that now and i'll tell you why because we're using actual uh, a darker color we're using black which covers no matter what you put in here black will pretty much cover it okay so i'm going to go ahead and drop some drops in there There we go. That's about three drops of that Alpha Flex. And now, let's go ahead and we're going to transfer over. I just put a little piece of transfer tape here. You see on the top here? So I'm going to peel this off. And a lot of times you'll see that sometimes it doesn't peel off right away. If you have, um, where did this guy go? If you guys have one of these little spatula things here you can get them from like michael's or any art store i'm sure amazon you can always just kind of press down the graphic a little bit more it's just not catching on that transfer tape and then as you peel it up so you want to peel it away from the backing see that it comes off a lot easier now sometimes you'll have a super like intricate like for example the wings logo has a bunch of small little pieces if you see that those pieces are not coming off you want to place this guy back down you know wherever it's at so i'll give you an example let's say like the two didn't completely come off here i would place the two back down and then press on it hard to try to get all of those pieces and then pull it back up you the goal is to try to get as many pieces on here in the exact spots they were on this white paper you know without manipulating anything so You'll be going, you'll be doing a lot of going back. Oh, I missed a piece. Go back, clear it up, and then bring it back until you peel the whole piece off. 
okay? This is an easy stencil today, but I'm telling you guys that because like one of the other Patreon members, Everett, asked me, he said, hey man, this Wings logo isn't coming off. You have to know that you have to pull it off like this where it's perpendicular with the actual white paper. You wanna peel it exactly like this because that's the easiest way to peel it off. And then one other piece of advice, I do this a lot and I know you guys have seen me work with this. And of course, they're all gone when I need one. Oh, here it goes one. I use this little X-Acto knife sometimes. And the reason why I'll use that is because if method number one didn't work where we're just pressing it down and trying to peel it back up, then what I'll do is I'll put it back down onto the spot that's not picking up and help lift it. I'll help peel it just from the outer corner to help boost it onto this transfer, the transfer tape, okay? So you'll see that happen too, is that you'll press it and for whatever reason, maybe the vinyl is not having a great day. Uh, you know, it could be temperature, it could be anything, you know, it could be old vinyl, it could be defective. You know, it could be you chose the bad version of the vinyl. You know, you could have chosen a premium vinyl, but you chose a cheap vinyl. You know, there's millions of reasons, but you know, the exacto knife way to pick things up once you get good at it, it's not difficult to work with stencils. All right, so that's my whole harp about <laughs> stencils for, for you guys, the beginners especially. And now what we wanna do is place this guy down somewhere where we can see that when we, when we place it down, it'll be somewhere in the center. So I like somewhere like right there, okay? And we're gonna do the same thing. Let's take the transfer tape off first of this guy. So I place that down. And notice that I'm not like pressing down hard on the stencil. I don't want it to grab onto the orange that much. I just want it to cover and mask the orange so there's no black paint that gets on top of it, okay? The only place that we want black paint, guys, is in the numbers, all right? Now here's a perfect example of the vinyls not coming off. So I could see the edge of this four and I'm gonna use my X-Acto to press it down and then guide the rest of this transfer tape off, okay? So that's another issue that people might have in the beginning is they say like, yo, it's not coming off. Sometimes you just gotta help guide it off. That's all it is, okay? now. Another thing, you notice how I'm rolling this, this transfer tape off? I'm rolling it exactly how when we first took the transfer tape and this off of this, we're rolling it the same way, which is we're trying to roll it even with this surface. This, this black vinyl is going here. We want this vinyl to be peeled off like that too. So as I press down on the items that we want to be kept down, I'll also be rolling this off in the same way. Y'all see that? You roll it off, it makes it a lot easier for that vinyl to stick and press to our uh, orange here, okay? So let's do the same thing real quick. I can reuse this piece. Bam. Sometimes the vinyls stick well to this. So let's just see if I could see. I could just peel it off. Cool. And uh, now we're going to place this guy down somewhere around here. All right. I got the two locations set. So the next thing I got to do is just peel off this transfer tape. Again, see how I'm pressing things down as I go. That way things don't lose their position. You want them to be exactly where they need to be. This is trash now. And now you don't start just shooting. <laughs> you gotta cover spots up here, okay? So you notice that there's a spot here that needs to be covered up. Coincidentally, this is like a perfect size so you can even use that. And it's actually a good idea because this doesn't have any masking, like tape or adhesive on it. And it covers this area up nicely, okay? So let's go take some of that. I think I got some tape here. I do. Dope. So I'll just take a little bit of that tape and we'll mask this area off without having to stick it. There we go. 
go. The other tape I love to use is this blue tape. And I always have blue tape just kind of hanging out somewhere. Okay. Now this feels a little sticky. You feel that? You hear that? And I don't want it to peel off. I don't want it to peel off the orange. So a lot of times you could just put it against your shirt and you'll get it to become a little less stickier and you could then place it down, okay? Same thing with this here, it's like, it's, it's not a lot, so I'm just gonna go ahead and place it down. Really, I wanna lock stuff in though, okay? Now over here and here, I could still see that it's like a pocket, so we gotta lock that, that guy down. And just, this is just for the sake of convenience, guys. I'm using this little tape here, but really you want to use a masking tape or something. We want to lock the numbers in where only they show. So as I'm going through, I'm making sure there are any like air pockets or bubbles or anything, like these little spots that I just covered up, that they're all locked in too. Cool. Now I'm just pressing here on the numbers because I want to lock that section in. I'm not trying to do anything over the top. Just get enough where I know that they're placed down well. Okay. Now let's test this guy out. We don't want to just spray the numbers. Cool. That looks good. I'm going to do it from a distance and I'm going to do it real light. Good. I got a little bit more to go. I didn't want to overspray it. It's it's good to just very gently and lightly layer things out. You can still see the orange underneath, and that's okay. You know, that's the that's our first layer. You know, you don't want it to be like uh, over the top. If you if you put too much down, it's gonna start seeping underneath, and you're gonna have like really uh, a botched job at the end. And so um, I'd rather just take my time and layer it out. As that's happening, I'm just looking for any paint because sometimes paint builds up in that front of the airbrush. And when that happens, then now instead of shooting straight, it'll hit something and then veer off. So if you're shooting and you're trying to be real technical, uh, that could really hurt you. Okay, so just watch out for that. Man, Legacy, I just saw what you said, man. Certain fabrics like Dior, Jacquard, there's always going to be a bit of fraying, but you can use a lighter to graze it clean. That's exactly what um, one of the suggestions that I had put on the on the Patreon tutorial on how to get that Jacquard. I, I, I gave you guys a couple of different options, actually. Oh, man, Legacy. That's a, that's a good... I, I, I didn't think about that. Maybe I need to look at some Fisker's scissors is there a certain uh, model number if you can pm me or dm me i'd really appreciate it man um i've been looking to get some new new scissors these are good though man they've worked really well i actually ended up getting these from amazon a while ago uh in like this whole leather working pack and they gave me two of these super sharp they cut nice and straight i really like it Oh, Webs asked the same thing. What's the best Fiskars? Is there a certain pair? I, I feel like, you know, all the nice scissors uh, that cut leather and all that stuff, um, they're really, really expensive, man. Uh, every time I go to check out a pair, it's always like like $50 plus. I don't know. I don't know why that is. 
But I'm sure that's because of the quality, right? It's got to be because of the quality of how they last. All right, let's hit this again. I hit it a little bit harder this time. Maybe I shouldn't have, especially because I'm new to this paint. And then I tagged myself too. Sweet. Great job. <laughs> the whole point was to leave it right there, dude. Oh, well. It's all good. LC1119. I got to remember that now. There's there's no way I'm remembering that. And the probability of me coming back to the stream and looking for that. LC, okay. How am I going to remember that? Legit check. 111 couldn't be that hard to remember. And then 9. Okay. Even if I remember LC111, I think we'll get to it. <laughs> oh, the blades are really sharp and last. How much were they, if you don't mind me asking, uh, Legacy? I'm sure I'll, I'll find it and I'll probably just end up picking them up. But yeah, it's always good, man, especially now that I'm, I'm working with a lot of leathers and materials and fabrics and doing a lot of cutting. I want to make sure that I'm using the you know, best of the best. I think we're pretty much done with this, guys. I, I don't want to... You know, I don't want to overdo the black there because once I see it start to get like wet spots, y'all see the wet spot there? I'm not too fond of wet spots, y'all. So I might just give it maybe one light glaze over and then we'll we'll peel it. And then if I got it hand painted, I will. I should have mentioned, y'all could hand paint this too, man. I just find it more convenient to do this I think with an airbrush. I don't know if it's just because I'm accustomed to using an airbrush or, you know, maybe I started using stencils a lot and I'm comfortable doing it. But regardless, um, whenever I tried to do it hand painting, which my skills were probably not that great then either, they would always, always bleed through. <laughs> I'm going to unveil this, it's probably going to be all bled through. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh good, not much has changed. <laughs> Let's see how it looks. <laughs> That'd be terrible. Just terrible. Like Chuck would say, right? Terrible. Let's see, why does this thing don't want to come off? I got it linked up to this blue tape. That was real smart. It was smart when I was doing it. I'm like, oh, cool. We could lock it together. And now it's pain in the ass. All right, there we go. Hey, let's go. First section looks clean. That's not the section that counts. Now, um, man, some people wait for this to dry. I don't. <laughs> I don't know if that's... Um, courageous of me to do but I just feel like I need to get this stencil off as soon as I can so Ooh, that's probably not the best way to start that but you want to try to clean it off in one clean sweep you don't want it to fall back down onto the actual paint All right, I gotta be careful here you can already see I've marked it up a little bit there Let's get it. Sick. So these are good to go. Now see the insides, guys? I let that stuff dry, man. Let that, you know, give it its uh, moment to kind of cure onto the actual orange. Um, the reason I, I say that is because I've rushed it before. And when I do that, man, and I, and I nick the black, I'm just like, dude, that was dumb. You know, so let me give that a couple of minutes to still dry. Uh, while it's still drying, I could start measuring out the cuts. Where is that little orange tag that we started with? Let's move all this junk. Stuff gets so chunky real quick here. Okay, that's all stuff we don't need anymore. Now I just need to find that orange tag. Orange tag, where are you? Bruh, really? Did y'all see it? If you guys could see it, man, let me know. 
half the time it'll be right in front of my face and I don't see it. Uh, hmm, that's weird. All right, well, let's just cut. <laughs> All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is just try to cut it separately. Now, you don't have to eyeball, uh, eyeball this, but I usually do. Just want to make sure that the cut looks clean and sharp. And you got it in like one take. You don't want to lag on it. Sick. So it goes 24 is done. Now we're going to mimic this. So I'm going to try to do exactly what we just did there. Doesn't need to be perfectly to that size. You just want to get it to be. Close. There we go. Got some tags made. Now you guys can see that the tag here, it's longer, so we're gonna just trim it down. But we gotta remember that when we put the tag in, it needs to have a little bit of excess. So let me show you guys. I'm not gonna push this guy in right now, but I'll show you guys a visual. So in the beginning of the live feed here, I showed you guys that I cut this guy open. Now you can place the number in, place it farther along this line. So then that way when you glue it and we sew this guy up, you can sew it up and secure the actual tag. So I'm gonna have to push this in a little bit more. But at the end of the day, we got our tags done. You know what I mean? Um, now that I know that the, the color looks good, let's just go ahead and clear this out real quick. The the black looks really, really good, man. So shout out to Alpha Flex. This looks, man, it looks really good. I almost don't want a clear coat on top of it. But the last step is um, just adding some LK finisher, okay? Really up to you guys where you want to go with the gloss on that. I like to usually use, where is this guy at? Of course he's not around when I need him. But I like to use the, the matte. So if you guys are looking for a factory finish, I would go with the matte. Mm, I don't know where I put it. It's got to be around here somewhere. I was using it yesterday, so I'm sure it's somewhere around here. Uh, but yeah, it looks kind of like this. It says LK Shoes. Um, this company is at LKTopCoats.com. LKTopCoats.com, and that's for this inner coat. If I had messed up on this 24 and the 00, that inner coat was supposed to help seal that orange section and make it easier to take off any overspray or black on uh, the parts that shouldn't have had it on there. So. Um, it looks like it worked really well, man. It, um, the, the numbers look locked in well, um, so I'm happy. Uh, now I'm just kind of waiting for the number four and the zero zero, the inner parts, to dry a little bit more. And once they're dry, I'm going to hit it with some LK scratch-resistant uh, mat. So uh, anyways, guys, time is 8.06 p.m. Uh, do you guys have questions? Let me know. Um, we're live. We're good to go. Uh, I really appreciate you guys. Um, you know, rolling through and watching another uh, another tutorial. I uh, hope you guys learned something from it. If you don't have a sewing machine, you can also simulate stitch this, which means, you know, you can just take this guy out, use a, a, a needle, and just go through and complete the stitch line. 
And basically a simulation just means it's not really stitched in, like the 24 or the tag wouldn't be stitched in. It would just look like it's stitched in and you can just glue it in. Um, speaking of glues, where's my barge, man? So I could show you guys what I use. This is what I use for gluing. It's called barge super stick. I use this for my soles. I use this for any kind of heavy, heavy duty stuff that I need to know that the thing is not going to come off. I use barge super stick. So I'll use barge super stick on both sides and then press the tag in. And then I'll grab a clamp from like Home Depot and just clamp this guy overnight. So then that way it doesn't, um, it doesn't budge. It doesn't move. It gets that solid because um, barge super stick works off of pressure. If it's not at a certain pressure, it doesn't activate. So that's really what I'm looking for at the end, end result for that is to make sure that uh, that barge really holds that little section. So, I mean, it's such a small little spot. It's not going to be like he's going to be walking one day and he's going to just fall over, you know what I mean? But uh, at the end of the day, you still want it to be where it looks factory, it looks clean, looks finished, you know what I mean? And uh, today we got some custom tags, man. Um, I really want to peel them off, guys, and show you guys the finished product. But I think that you guys are, hopefully you guys are good with where we're at today. You know what I mean? Uh, time is 8.08. .08. GT Chong said, no questions here. Great work. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. I'm always nervous, man. I could pull this thing up and it could be a bunch of overspray on it. And so it's always nice to have, a, I guess you could say, a successful day in showing you guys how to use stencils, how to use the airbrush a little bit. Um, you know, how to make custom tags today. We got a little bit of, you know, beginner work on a couple of different sections. We had a lot of, you know, nice points, I think, you know. So, all right, y'all. Um, I think we don't have any questions. Um, see you guys very soon. <laughs> uh, my uh, All of my um, social medias up top here. Our Instagram did get changed to Feel Good Threads LA for the time being. I don't know um, what's going on with that. I've I've got other people dealing with it. So uh, hopefully we can get that um, Instagram back. If not, please follow us at Feel Good Threads LA. Pretty much the same thing, but with an LA at the end. Uh, everywhere else, we're at Feel Good Threads. And uh, if you guys have any questions, man, don't uh, hesitate to hit me up through the comment section. If you guys learned something new today, uh, if you valued the work, you know, we always take donations, y'all. So um, if you guys look in the links, uh, there's uh, several links there for Patreon. For joining us on Twitch, um, you know, just to help you guys out. All right. Um, with that said, my name is Sohil with Feel Good Threads. Uh, appreciate y'all, and I'm out. Peace.